I'm very glad uh, to have three excellent speakers uh, here on the panel um, for the topic of airports and railways. Um, and airports and railways actually were one of the first applications uh, where digital signage became business critical. And uh, so that's why we, we all are very interested uh, what it needs to run a business critical um, application mm. at airports and, uh, and railways uh, to learn from you. Um, and for an introdu introduction, we have Aisu here from Vestel, so um, screens, hardware. Uh, we have Rafael from Deneva, um, software company um, based in Spain. And we have Florian here from Service, uh, based in Switzerland, uh, doing sensors and software that uh, runs on, on the back of those sensors. Um, so I, maybe you, you can briefly explain uh, to us what you're doing for airports and uh, and railways, so we can understand uh, how your solutions work there, and then we probably dive into a bit more detail on uh, what it is, uh, how it is to run a business critical application. Okay, so we are a software company based on Palencia, a small city in Spain, and we are mainly focused on, on railway projects, including metro networks and, and railway, okay? Uh, and uh, we've been in the business for 30 years now, okay? And, and we started digital signage projects using CRT monitors, because now it's have an LED, LCD, and everything's cool, but... Do, do you still remember, Isil? Yeah. The CRT. Yeah. <laughs> the big ones, okay? We started, well, our first project was using CRT monitors, so we are a really old company, okay? And, and we are doing that real-time passenger information solutions, okay? For, for railway stations mainly? Yes. Okay. Uh, and we are just the OEM manufacturer, uh, Europe's biggest OEM manufacturer as Vestal, and we are in the industry since 1994. And we do our own brand, uh, Vestal, together with our OEM partners. And we have just done this, one of the biggest projects we have done with the airports was this biggest European airport, Istanbul Airport project, is our milestone of this yeah. business where we have placed uh, 3,510 screens in one location and this was the biggest project. So apart from it, we have the several rail railway uh, projects as well all around Europe, but these are kind of like smaller projects when you compare it with our biggest uh, milestone one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, we are a people flow sensor manufacturer based in Switzerland. We uh, focus on measuring people flow mainly in airports. Uh, we've been doing that for about 15 years, 110 airports globally, where we measure KPIs such as Q wait times, Q length, which is then often shown to passengers as well. Beyond airports, our sensors are also used in a wide range of other industries through partners, um, including um, railway stations, rolling stock, and so on. So let's let's start with the difference and commonalities between railways and airports. I mean, airports are the single locations. I need just that. 3,500 and a couple um, displays just in, in one location. Whereas uh, when, we, when I think about railways, it's many, many stations, um, probably a couple of screens at every station, but it's, it's large networks. Um, so let's probably start with, with airports. Um, and where are screens used at airports? So in the, if I want to give the example from Istanbul Airport, we just use them both on the traveler facing area and at the back stages, whereas they help for the um, ground staff uh, to show them uh, what to do, where to go. So uh, uh, on the traveler faced ones, they are there on the flight information display screens, on the departure gates area, on the baggage claim area. So these are all the business critical areas. Plus, uh, the screens are also being used on the retailer part of the uh, airports, such as the, especially on the duty-free areas. Uh, so our screens basically just tell what uh, what to do for the passengers, where to go for the passengers, plus what to do for the staff. Yeah. So on, on these projects, what are the special requirements on, on the screens? Is it very different from mm. on retail use cases or... or Office Act use cases? Actually, there are. There are some different uh, specifications what required from the airport one. One of the things, as, this, as we have done this project seven years ago, the technologies were a little bit different. So I remember we used, to, we used polarizers to make sure that the uh, angle uh, is on the yeah, required level. Just imagine that you are in front of a flight information display and you just don't stand in front of it so that you miss your flight because you couldn't see the screen. It's not uh, unacceptable. Uh, there 
therefore we use the polarizers to uh, increase the hazing level where and it helped us to develop to high haze products which we are now offering after seven years obviously uh, another thing was the of course brightness because the airports are the uh, areas where it gets huge sunlight so we use 700 nits products um, some on the hardware side, we had this special for the serviceability issues. We changed the back cover, the way that it gives the, because during those days we were using an OPS partner together with our screens. And the for the OPS to be placed on the shortest path that if any critical thing happens, the um, teams can access us on a very, very short notice period. And apart from it, I also remember that on the retail side of uh, part of it, uh, it took us some while for the color coding of the Turkish Airlines red to be matching on our screens. It was a special requirement. Okay, that, but that's more of a typical like, brand thing. Brand, definitely, <laughs> definitely. Yeah. So, uh, because you know, at the end of the day, these are business critical screens. Plus, they need to. They are great eye catchers, like in the retail area. So, there are specifications that requires for airports plus the commonalities that we use on the other verticals as well. So, how about software? Special requirements uh, for these use, use cases. Uh, two two very important things. One is that you need to to try to maintain the, the existing hardware. Okay, in some cases we have projects with uh, LED panels from 12 years ago. You need to implement their protocol, their communication, so you need to keep the, the current. They're, they're not, the airport, I think, is different because they're renewing everything. In the case of transportation, you need to maintain the, the current. Okay, so, so you get basically a couple of new screens uh, yeah, every yeah. year. So Combined with the current and solutions. And then 12 years? Yeah, 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 in some cases. And you've seen the RS 485 communications, 442, so really, really old communication protocols. And you need to keep and maintain that hardware. They will renew it in the midterm, but yeah. from the very beginning, you need to, to keep them. And the second thing is real time. You need to have a as much real-time information as possible to make it fully automatic. This yeah. is the, the and, typical case. And how about security? Um, any any special security requirements? Not, it's software? not so important. It's important, obviously. Okay, but at the end, all these systems are on-premise solutions. Okay. So, so yeah, they're inside the data center of the station. So there, they has no inter access to okay. internet. So security is not. A, it's, it's, it, you need to be secure, yeah. but it's not so important because it's not cloud-based. It can be accessed from the, from outside, so it's important, but not so yeah. important. Okay. Okay. So in, in terms of sensors, so I mean, where, where are the difference the differences between a retail sensor and a, and a sensor you're using in airports or, or railway stations? So I can second what ISO said around eye to detail. I mean, when an airport spends uh, billions on a new terminal, um, we've also had uh, Middle Eastern airport CEOs personally approve the color code of our of our sensor, <laughs> even though it was installed at 30 meters. <laughs> um, no, but uh, joking aside, um, these terminals are built to last, so uh, durability and, and reliability of the sensors is more important than, for example, in the retail, where you would have every couple of years, maybe the tenant would change. Uh, there, they're really installed to last 10, 20, maybe even longer years. Yeah. And um, on, we, we talked about uh, hardware and installing uh, things, but um, on service, I would assume, is a, is a very uh, important thing because they are business critical. So do you have special SLAs? Actually, again, to give the example from this big Istanbul airport case, uh, so, you know, we cannot do anything on our own. We always have our partners. And on the Istanbul uh, case, we have the, uh, our domestic service team was supporting us to do all the installations, etc. And uh, one of the key requirements from the airport management was two uh, Vesta staff members to be stable in the airport full time uh, for the lifetime of the products. So the products are now there for seven years. After the third year, I think, they tell us that, okay, your products are not creating any issues, so the staff can go and we will call you whenever it's needed. But the first three years, we have two stable members who lived in the airport for 24 by 7. And do you have separate stock there as well? So um, as far as I know, yes, yes. But the main thing was to make sure that the uh, staff is there to give the critical uh, movements when it's needed. Okay. Mm. 
So how, how about uh, software and, and service reaction times? Um, do, do you actively monitor the network? Um, yes. yes, the thing is this critical critical environments, okay? So it's supposed to be 99% uptime or more than that, okay? I think in Switzerland is 99.95% uptime, so it's one hour per year, something like that. So they're critical environments, okay? So you need to be connected in real time and, and, and checking what's happening, okay? The thing is, it's better not to inform than misinform. Okay, that's, that's the, the point on this market, okay? Yeah. So if, if you're not sure that the information is correct, then put neutral information or, or something like that, because if, if not, you, can, it's, it's a, you turn the station into a, a mess. <laughs> chaos. Yeah. It's a chaos, okay? Yeah. So, and also keep in mind that we are supporting displays, but also alphanumeric LED panels, uh, timetables, alphanumeric timetables, also the PA, also the audio, the public address. So it's, everything is integrated in the same yeah. platform. But, okay? but you set um, the, the software on-premise. Yes. So how do you do the monitoring then? Because we convinced the, the, the <laughs> operator to say, okay, give me an access to any VPN, a secure VPN, so we can enter to okay, the so, system. Okay, so you have v VPN access yes. uh, into, into these uh, uh, environments. Yeah. And then you have actually staff... Um, just monitoring the system. Just, just monitoring yeah. uh, the system. Yeah. And uh, how do you do service then? I mean, in case something something happens, um, how's that organized? We try to so to fix it remotely, okay. And and the most important thing is switch on and off devices if it's not, not okay, okay. So you can remove it from the system, and and to check the, the that the real time information is okay. Okay. So, so you're that. checking two things. Yeah. It's one the hardware is running. Yeah. And, and the second thing, information. that the information, uh, so the content is right, yeah, right yeah. Um, on, on these systems. Uh -huh. yeah. So how about the, the sensor world? How's it working there? The, the service, the... I, I would assume you're not just selling in some sensors, but you, you also take care of what happens with them. Well, yes, of course. On one hand, you have the sensor, and then you have algorithms that process the data from the sensor to then uh, generate insights, such as a, a wait time at a security checkpoint. Um, which we then don't uh, ourselves put onto onto a passenger facing screen or an employee facing screen. This is done through through the airport or through some other some other partners. But the the tricky part is not just monitoring the sense, but actually monitoring the algorithms to detect proactively whether the KPI that is uh, calculated might be off due to whatever reason. It's a very emotional topic what you show on these screens, right? Passengers arrive with a certain amount of anxiety at the airport. They then rely on that information that they uh, receive on screen. And if that is inaccurate, uh, that can very quickly lead to, to frustration. So there again, it's monitoring not only the devi devices, but also the content that, exactly. that, that yeah. you're showing. Um, and on your, your experience, how stable is your software in that, in that respect? Um, it really depends on a kind of a airport by or, or case by case basis. Um, we can fine tune to a high degree of re reliability, but when something like social distancing happens, all of a sudden this this is then also new territory where we then need to go in and, and uh, tweak again. I think the uh, the difficulty is really having uh, not monitoring the devices, but monitoring the the information whether that's correct. That's not always trivial. Yeah, and uh, as as far as I know, you're um, also doing your own software and really supporting the processes uh, within airports. Um, can you talk sure. a little bit about about that? How how that integration works? Because um, I mean, business critical is all about uh, being part of the uh, of a core process um, at an airport or in a railway. Yeah. So for us, airports is that one industry where we uh, pride ourselves to be also process experts or domain experts. Um, I think that takes quite a bit of time until you can really claim that. Hey, can uh, you share just one or two secrets about what, what's so <laughs> special about uh, measuring at airports? Um, it's just that complex ecosystem of all these stakeholders that you would have. You have the regulator, they have the airport operator, you have tons and tons of... Um, subsidiaries or, or outsourced service providers. Uh, you have government entities like border control and bringing them all to the same table and ensuring that they can trust in the data and that they start making decisions based on that same data, that uh, takes a certain amount of effort. Yeah. So that, that's already interesting. That's I mean, the data you're creating is not only used by just by just to show it yeah. um, on on a public screen, but really also by security um, and, and other 
internal uh, processes. Exactly. Yeah. So just as important it is for, for the traveler or the passenger to, to make their own decisions based on, on the information they perceive, it's the same also for employee. Uh, today during the, the, the keynote, we heard about the importance of employee experience, and it's exactly the same at the, at the airport, that those uh, workers on the front line, not just the duty managers or, or their managers, that they have real-time information on whether it's uh, personal devices or, or screens and, and can monitor their own performance in real time. So that's the real business critical part of it because I mean for me as a passenger knowing how long I have to wait in line is might, might be critical for me because I might miss my flight yeah. um, but that, that's probably the, the more business critical parts for uh, the employee facing parts. Right? Exactly. For, for the traveler, it makes a difference in terms of stress level that you, you know what to expect. Uh, maybe you end up spending a bit more money in, in, in the retail area if you're relaxed. But where you can really make a difference as an operator, as an airport operator, is if your frontline employees know exactly what's going on and, and have that information available. Yeah. I, are you doing that as well? Or are you just responsible for displaying uh, information towards the, um, the public or are you also helping um, the, the railways operate more efficiently? Not, not in, that, in that way. For example, we are supporting the driver's room so they have the schedule of, of the next trains on, so they can make this kind of plan, uh, planning. But not, not, in the, not the queue. We are not supporting. We, we can support it, but we have no solution for queue management and, and yeah. queue. But, but the thing is, you, you're doing both your yes. employee uh, facing yes. and... Uh, uh user or, or customer facing. Okay. Um, let's, and that, that's all very, very interesting. And, and you, you certainly learned a lot providing business critical um, software uh, sensors and, and, and hardware. But how does it help you in, in the rest of your business? Is there, is there any things uh, I'm, people in the audience can learn that probably some of them don't do business criti critical things? Um, so what are the key le learnings you take uh, from these business critical applications to your to the rest of your business? For example, uh, the, the experience about critical systems, about reliable systems is good for any any vertical, okay? But also we are we are trying to ha we have a single platform and it's called Eneva and we are using with a, with a traffic layer convert turned into a passenger information system, but we have a, for example a, a, mod a module for cruises so you can provide information on board for cruises and, and ships. And at the end, it's the same software. So we are really transparent between sharing experiences in different verticals. Okay? So, so it's, it's basically uh, doing the transition from yeah. transportation from, yeah. from railways into different verticals. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but also from, a, from an operational side, I mean, um, how's the, the service concept or the, the monitoring concept? Mm -hmm. Um, is that something you can transfer for, or is that something other verticals such as say, yes. well, it's not for business cri critical for us, uh -huh. we're not going to pay for it? Yeah, for example, we have different, we're involved in different projects in, in OSIN retail, and there are big companies that are using our platform, and for example, Inditex is using our platform, okay? So this experience of critical environments that being able to provide information, in the case of Barcelona Sands in Spain, is a high speed. Uh, lane tra railway station, and we are dealing with 1,700 trains per day, fully automatic. So this kind of stress on the system, the experience, and to have a reliable system is good for any other big. So you know, the, the scaling of the network yeah. on, uh, and running lots of information yes. um, to to different locations. Yeah, yes. Yeah. How is it on the hardware side? I mean, all of the modifications that we have done to achieve the uh, airport project, actually we have just used it or offered it to the customers on the other areas where the signage is being used as a business critical. So it's not a, I mean, even at the, even at the retail where the content keeps on changing a lot and a lot and it doesn't have any tolerance for the black screen, uh, we always use the modifications like the hardware modification or the back cover modification, for example, I mentioned that we used on the airport on the other verticals as well and it helped is, is pricing very different no it's not <laughs> small <laughs> modification <laughs> okay 
I mean, for us, uh, an airport is a great entry point into other uh, verticals because if you look at Munich Airport here, right, it's not just uh, an airport in the traditional sense, it's also a shopping center, it's an office building, um, it has tons of uh, bathrooms and so on and so on. So for all these use cases, airports allow us to, to learn about those uh, better and then work with, with partners to ensure that our sensor is, is kind of as, as versatile and as industry agnostic as possible. So, and I mean, for, for me, a question would be um, on the requirements. What was the, the biggest surprise when you started working with Airports or started working in business critical applications? What was the biggest surprise and the hardest nut to crack for you? Um, I think that the biggest difference between uh, airports and train is, is the information, the real-time information in the airports is, is better than in, on railways, okay? okay. Because at so the end... They, they probably need better sensors. No, no, no. The no, it's, no it's, it's better <laughs> their information. Also, yeah. the operational uh, software on the airport is far more better than traffic control because it's, at the end you're talking or you're trying to understand what's happening with the train 200 kilometers away from the station, yeah. and you need to to read all the all the map of the infra train infrastructure, the the rail itself, yeah. to know the position, to estimate the delay, and we're doing on that on that in our part. So in the case of an airport, the operational software is giving you that. The, the 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 gate giving you the delays, everything, but we need to estimate that from the real time okay. traffic environment. So is is we have uh, this extra part of traffic control embedded on the platform. How, how are you doing this? Is this uh, statistics or is that yeah, AI? Yeah, yeah, how, you how have you a typical, it? typical <laughs> you, you have the, the best scenario and, and try to 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 estimate the delay based on that yeah. be best scenario. But you have we are, we are including the the planning the traffic planning uh, in our platform too, okay? So we, we know exactly how many trains, the time and arrival and everything. This is the theoretical information. Yeah. And, and we need to guess the real information in real yeah. time based on the infrastructure. So it's, it's really complex to do that, okay? Uh, I can imagine yeah, yeah. For, for a complex uh, railway network, um, Estimating these, yeah, these and, like and the then distributing it to the to the right point. And yeah. I, I know I had a discussion with uh, German railways at uh, some point in my career, uh, and on the complexity of such a system and um, on man then managing informa different information for thousands and thousands of screens. And mm. when, if you say you you calculating that as well, um, that's a real big challenge. I yeah. I, I definitely believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Mm, for us, maybe I've given all the examples from the airport, but not as surprising, but one of the special requirements we have faced a couple of years ago was one of the railway case studies where um, one of the system integrators just pulled our product from a distribution and it was just a regular indoor product, but they positioned in a railway station. And we got a complaint calls from the railway management saying that, oh, your products are broken. And once we realized that they have just put it on a semi outdoor place uh, where the product was actually an indoor one yeah. so that we needed to replace it first uh, develop a ip5x product and replace it with that one so those type of also interesting uh, requirements let me see or necessities also can come to us at the hardware side actually if it's they are not positioned in a uh, right way yeah. um two tough nuts for us to crack. One is somewhat connected to what Rafael was saying. Um, in airports, even though you need to guesstimate less and you have more interfaces to other data systems, once you're the one responsible for putting out data onto a screen, you're held responsible for the quality of it. The moment we started integrating uh, other data sources, we started having the challenge of not being able to, to fully control kind of the, the output of the data. Because if, for example, you're showing uh, wait times at check-in desks, and you're putting in, pulling in that information from an interface which desk is allocated to which airline and someone made a mistake there, then you're automatically held responsible for it. So that's, that's an ongoing challenge. The other one I would say is more in terms of installation, especially when it comes to new construction projects. In, in brownfield projects, we can go, we can survey the site, we can exactly pinpoint where something is supposed to be installed. Um, in these uh, greenfield projects, um, I would say in nine out of 10 cases, for, based on initial plans we received, it then ends up, being, ends up looking different and causing headaches for everyone involved to then install it at the proper location, having to throw in more units and so on. Uh, 
And that brings up a very good point. Um, when this is a team game, um, and you you're doing just one component, how's that? How's your ecosystem? How's the the partnership uh, working? Is that all coordinated by the railway or the airport operator, or how's that? ecosystem and network uh, working for you? In our case, are public tenders, so the winner has the, all the specifications. For example, we, we have some projects uh, mm -hmm. with, with Vestel, and we're working with them. Not, not, we are not selling the hardware again, but we are uh, homologating and we are implementing the protocols to control, so the, the railway companies buying displays from Vestel and using them at the, at the stations. Okay? OPS yep. is a typical environment for, for transportation. OPS is, yeah. is the best option for transportation, and, but we're using Vestel displays and and integrating their protocols. And so we are doing that with other okay. providers. And depends on the project, depends on the winner of that tender. If they have some partners or partnership with companies and we are integrating their hardware. But uh, it sounds to me like there can't be so much competition on these tenders because I mean, you, you need a lot of, lot of specific know-how um, in the industry. And as you said, um, you're also doing the calculation uh, for, for prediction of uh, delays and, and things like this. Uh, so it's probably a very small market, right? Yes, 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 really. Yeah, and, and there are huge companies like Siemens, Alstom, that is working with us in these big tenders. That is, is not only is, is not the passenger information system, it's the station, the rail itself, everything is, is on that project, okay? So they're long-term projects from five, six years, yeah. okay? And, and we are the last company in the station yeah. with the, the guys <laughs> putting the software on the displays, okay? Yeah. So how's partner network looking for you? And like he said, it's all about having the right partners in your uh, portfolio and make sure that you meet your customers' requirements the way that they need it. And sometimes you just need to coordinate it from one of the other parties because if you just expect customers to coordinate that, then it, it's going to fail for sure. <laughs> so as long as you have a strong uh, ecosystem for your partnerships, I think it takes us to the success always. So for some parts of the whole solution, we, we have preferred partners that we'd like to work with globally. And then for others, so for example, the physical installation, we need to rely on case-by-case -case local partners, which can be difficult. Sometimes it's also the airport that says, I have my preferred partner, and then we just need to work for them. Um, what we would like to do more, but can be tricky, is uh, you asked earlier about you know what process know-how do we bring in. So for example, we can recommend the airport to put up uh, employee-facing screens showing their real-time performance, but if the whole investment is coming from a different department, so for example, the passenger experience angle, they don't really care about employee-facing displays, right? Then we can push as much as we want, but if that's not part of the, the scope, then it won't happen, at least for the foreseeable future. Yeah. So for me, it was very in insightful. Um, I'd like to use the last uh, three or four minutes uh, for questions uh, from the audience. So if there's any question about business critical signage, how you do it, software, hardware, sensors, don't be shy. <laughs> Not going to be recorded. Okay. <laughs> yep. Um, how is that in terms of uh, insurance for your company in case you have, especially in your case, in case you're showing wrong information and some cases, some issues can occur? Do you have special? company like insurance? No, not so complex. Okay? The thing is, we are tracking all the events, so to, to show that the software was the software and the system was running and, it, and the information was okay. Because one thing is the information, like the, the other thing is the perception of the information. Okay, So somebody can say, okay, do you put that, the information in the wrong way? And we, can, we have a log of all the actions, so we can reconstruct the sequence and check what's happening in the case of a, of a Claim okay, okay, and depend on on that. But but uh, we have no no space. SLA is the only thing that we need on the contract, mm. the, the service level agreement, and that's all. Okay, we have no insurance problem with that with the information. Not in our projects. Okay. Another question. <laughs> Very good. Then thank you very much. Thank you. I shall rest well, Lauren, and you'll be around. So if any more questions <laughs> might come up, <laughs> you'll be here. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.